Welcome to Breen's at the Gate. This is our video blog for April 11th, 2018. There is, as always, much to talk about. We're going to try to do this in a slightly different format. Let's see how it goes. Let's talk about the national debt. The uh, CBO released budget numbers or long-term projection numbers that suggest the national debt is going to be a growing problem. I'm going to defer to our two economists on the panel to start out. So, uh, first of all, what do the numbers show? Let's start there, Bert. Well, it does show that uh, by uh, 2028, it'll be, uh, the debt will be greater than 100% of GDP. It'll surpass the 1946 uh, levels, which is significant. And, uh, what makes that significant? Well, it, I don't know if 100% necessarily is significant. It's, it's one of those benchmarks that we, that we mentioned. We'll have to wait and find out exactly, you know, exactly what, you know, what, what will play out. But at some point in time, the bill is going to come due. As long as the economy is powerful and is growing, uh, investors don't seem to, to mind much that we're accumulating the amount of debt that we are. Uh, but it'll really uh, cut into what the federal government is, is, uh, is willing to do. The projections by the CBO show most of our budget in the future is going to be entitlement largely tied to the elderly. Social Security and, and health benefits will be the lion's share of the budget. It, uh, I read one uh, commentator that said, it was, you know, it's almost like we've got a welfare for old people and run the Navy on the side. This is going to be very difficult for the government to do what government mm -hmm. should be doing. Sure. Jeff, what do you think long term about the implications of this? I, I don't think the CBO's numbers are really translate to a, a changed picture, although that was what the, the public press was, is Trump's deficit's a, a trillion dollars. Well, we were going to have trillion dollar deficits anyway. We are, uh, by their calculations, going to have them a little bit sooner. The problem that, that Bert ably described is, is this was on cruise control to disaster anyway. Uh, so, so collectively, the government hasn't been willing to confront this policy. And of course, when Mr. Trump uh, ran in the office, and, and you, you mentioned it, it's, it's the entitlements that are really driving this, this, this debt debacle that is, that is actually certain to happen. Uh, this is the train wreck we're all predicting and understand will happen. Uh, so, so I don't think it really changes much uh, in terms of the news that happened. Uh, obviously, there's, there's political football. Um, the Republicans now, unfortunately, they own it. Absolutely. Even though this problem was given to them, sure. but when you run as a, as a party and say, we're not going to touch entitlements, mm -hmm. and then you pass t tax cuts. Now, these tax cuts aren't that, uh, in, in, in the scheme of things, that is a very small uh, per, per, uh, possible of this, part of this, excuse me. Uh, and even if we have a problem, that wasn't really germane. But because of that, it's going to be really easy politically to assign the blame to that, yeah. even though the disaster was happening anyway. So, <laughs> Mark, no at what point do politicians actually start to respond to this problem? I guess that's the, we all keep thinking the Republican <laughs> Party keeps saying we're going to do something, we're yeah. saying we're going to do something. They don't. Yeah. What point which should we expect to see politicians actually do something about it? Well, we don't know actually in time because projections sure. are just projections. Right. But in theory, we never what, know. what would conditions look like you think that and, would actually provoke them to do something? In theory, at some point when it's, it becomes impossible to pay our debtors on a regular basis to keep them happy or when other consequences begin to uh, uh, affect the economy in such a way that it harms it substantially, then they will be faced with the problem. But of course, that is is when it's already it's already come to pass. They they don't want to see the deal with it before they actually see something substantial happen. Until they see something something substantial that's affecting the constituencies in their own districts, in their own states, and know they have to deal with it, then I don't think they're going to deal with it. They simply will refuse. Let me just add back in there because. Uh, we are now in, in the real ramp up to the baby boomers retiring. Right. And so, so this is nearer than people think in terms of when, we don't have to wait until all of the manifestations occur. There's gonna be a significant uh, crowding out of these other kinds of activities, uh, probably within the next five to eight years, such that I think they're gonna to have to deal with it at some point, but that's more than a presidential election away. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Let me throw another yeah. possibility out. So there is tension in the Middle East right now revolving around Syria. And if something did break out that caused us to uh, need to use our military a lot more, if you had a major expense that came due, yeah. something that the government legitimately needs to do and should be doing, it might really cause a, a short-term problem, which could, I think, roll the markets and, and cause our, uh, our, our ratings to sink. It could. But until then, until you see something tangible happening, Congress will keep pushing it off. Right. Mm -hmm.
And voters certainly don't provide any cues to the politicians that they should care more. I mean, we obviously don't elect people based on this, so <laughs> that's right. This is sort of where we are. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Tea Party, rest in peace. It's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's dead. Dead, dead, dead. dead. Yeah. It's going to say long live the Tea Party, but I don't know if I really care that much. So, anyway, <laughs> thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you later. <laughs>